Hello, everybody. This is John welcoming you to the channel, the Still Brew Reviewed, and to the series, A 50 State Coffee Journey USA, <clears throat> where I researched for one year a coffee that I want to review, one per state. See, it took a long time. And then I'm posting them every Sunday. So it's going to take another year to get them all posted. It's a two-year journey, but I'm so happy I did it. I've learned so much. And today, we're in the beautiful state of Alabama. We're going to be, do, uh, be doing Southern Girl Coffee Company. Here's the bag. All right, the name of this, Chiuha or Chihoa. I looked it up to get the proper pronunciation. Um, and that's the two I came up with. You know, every place has their local way they say stuff. <clears throat> For example, I live in Louisville, and people here say Louisville. And some people say Louisville, and I don't know. It goes as a whole shirt about it. So I hope I got one of those two uh, correctly. The word's actually um, a mess, uh, Kogi uh, Creek Native American word, meaning high place where many happily ever afters begin. And I believe it is where... <clears throat> the owners of this place, Leah and Brad um, Cleghorn, I don't think they met there, but they might have had their first date there, and um, a happily ever after happened, all right? So, <laughs> all right, so what about this place? Why is she so lovely? Well, the fact that it's a beautiful thing in Alabama, and where the, her and her husband kind of, well, I think they went on their first date. It's the highest natural park in Alabama. It's 2,407 feet. It's the oldest park in Alabama. Established in 1933, it has 2,799 acres. And what do they offer there? Well, um, lodging. There's a restaurant, campsites, and hiking trails. It's actually a beautiful place. I did some research on it. Um, as far as Leah goes, one of the reasons why this company was so appealing to me she used to sit with her grandfather and drink coffee, and they would, he would tell her stories about when he was growing up, when she was a kid. See, well, I did the same thing with my grandmother. I used to sit with her and drink coffee when I was a kid, and we would talk. And see, so I related to that right away. You know, she started roasting her dad, converted a gas grill into a roaster. <laughs> and then she had a roaster. I think it's a different one that they called, um, well, what did they call that? Thomas train or something because it looked like a train and it roasted um like five pound uh bags or five pounds at a time very small and we saw it at markets and festivals stuff like that her um a matter of fact she actually met her husband on uh, oxford fest uh while selling the coffee um Thomas the Roaster is what she called it. I got it written down here. And then she purchased a custom-made <clears throat> Guatemalan roaster, <clears throat> excuse me, which produces 25 kilograms, uh, 25 kilo um, batches of coffee. I guess that's what they're using now. Um, they have many coffee styles. If you look at their menu, many coffee styles um, and drinks, uh, coffee drinks, teas, cocoa, and also seasonal um uh, items and seasonal drinks and stuff like that they even have at their place cool stuff they have events i know what's coming up is a movie night so they have movies you can sit there and drink their beverages and watch them. see that's that's not that is really bringing the community together and i love that too see so what are we getting out of this coffee first of all the usual you know go roast it for you send it fresh You'll smell it three feet from, from the, if it's sitting on the front porch, you'll open the door, you'll get away. If you walk into the mailbox, you'll get it halfway across the street. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you've ever had freshly roasted coffee, there's nothing. I mean, I get store-bought. I buy it, okay? Um, it's convenient. It's easy. You're there. Uh, but, man, there's, there's, there's such a difference. Never smelled a bad one. This is fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. And with the smell and the taste, and I've been drinking it for about four days now. First, let me say, and you know what I mean by this term, silky and smooth is not a taste, but it is a low acidic, low 
bitter aftertaste. So it's like smooth, silky. That's how I do that when it's not real bitter and it's not real acidic. It's just smooth. But with the smell and the taste, I get a pistachio. And I know pistachio. Okay. Um, pistachio. I get stewed fruit and a kiss, a dusting of chocolate is what I'm getting out of here. Of course, all behind a traditional coffee flavor. It is very good. It is easy to drink. This method, I was going to use a pour over at the last minute. I decided to do a um, French press. Either way, delicious. Mm -mm. Oh, man. I'm telling you. If it wasn't for caffeine that I get too, if I could drink too much, it's not, caffeine's, caffeine's good for you. You know, stimulant, low doses. I mean, it doesn't really affect me as far as stimulation. I could drink it, and I do sometimes before I go to bed. It actually relaxes me, and I have no problems. There's people who say, I can't drink after 12 noon. It keeps me up all night. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I guess I'm so adapted to it uh, that I absolutely can and have drunk this within a half hour going to bed. All right, I'll watch a show on TV right before I go to sleep. I'll have a cup of coffee. I'll relax. It puts me right out. That being said, if I do drink too much, I get a little flutter, right? It's from caffeine. Um, or I would drink this beyond, you know, I wouldn't drink anything else. Oh, I love coffee. This is good. I really appreciate a fine cup of coffee. I forgot that I need to do it this way, too. I get so into it. I'm so excited. I'm going to pour this in here and then show you how it holds up to the other favorite way I like to drink it with a little cream in it. Mm. When you have a good coffee like this, the cream just enhances it and just becomes a part of it and just adds a beautiful touch to it. It doesn't cover it up. This is a really good coffee with a really interesting story. It's a really cool place. Check it out. Go online. Order something from them. I'm going to tell you right now, you will not, you will not be disappointed. I will have a link to this series in the first comment. Hit it, and it'll be all the 50 states. I'm not done yet, but I don't know when you're going to be watching this, so we'll just make like I am. And you're going to be able to see all the 50 states. Find yours. See what you think. Oh, and I almost forgot. We always do a little something about the state, things to do, interesting facts. Now, the review's over, but this is all part of it. This is obviously one of the places you need to go if you're in um, Alabama. What else? Well, became a state December 14th, 1819. The capital is Montgomery. Uh, nickname, Yellow Hammer. Um, can't read my own. Yellow Hammer is a, a type of bird. And um, Cotton State, also known as the Heart of Dixie, uh, named um, after the Alabama River. The Spanish were the first to reach the state, but the French settled it. Mobile, Alabama is the birthplace of America's original Mardi Gras. If you didn't know that, you thought it was New Orleans. No, first place was Alabama. Helen Keller's from Alabama. The Wright brothers opened the uh, first U.S. Civil Aviation School there. And they have the Birmingham Museum of Art, Oak Mountain State Park, Vulcan Park and Museum, a lot of parks, Park and Museum, a lot of state parks and things like that. Um, Huntsville Botanical Gardens, I would love to go there. Um, Red Mountain Peak, Man Wildlife Learning Museum, I'd love to go there too. Gulf Shore, well, you know I'd love to go there. They obviously have a coastline, so there's a lot to do in Alabama. That was a pretty cool state. Well, I'd like to thank you for the uh, making this delicious coffee and blending it to perfection. Keep up the great work. Hope everybody supports the, the ones on this channel trusting in my one-year journey. It's a two-year altogether, but one year doing the research. I did it for you. Take advantage of it. And as usual, and if you live anywhere near this place, Google it, find it, and check it out. Maybe go to a movie night. Bring the kids. Get some hot cocoa. You're going to love it.